One UI 6.0 Beta 1 on the Galaxy S23 series is finally here. After months and weeks of waiting, we finally get to see a glimpse of Samsung's interpretation of Android 14 and how things will look like on the road to the final build version. We're going to break it down and see what's new so far when comparing it to the current official software One UI 5.1. Hi, Ben from Sam Mobile. If you enjoy new and exclusive videos like this, then be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos on YouTube with Sam Mobile TV. Here's our first look of what's new on One UI 6 Beta 1 on the Galaxy S23 Ultra and compare it to One UI 5.1 running on the Galaxy S23 Plus. Let's dive straight in. As you can see from the software information section, we are running One UI 6.0 with Android 14. If we pop into the Android 14 software section, there is now a new Android 14 Easter egg, which moves away from the clock-based Easter egg of Android 13 and 12 over to the theme more based on space and astronomy. Once you press and hold on the center icon, the moving stars in the background begin to speed up with light trails before transitioning to a retro starship in which you can navigate by moving forward, taking turns, and slowing down. There is a circle icon and animation with an inner radius line that appears when doing so alongside positional coordinates at the bottom with other details such as velocity, star, class, radius, mass, and bodies making for a fun departure from the previous clock-based Easter eggs. As I'm based in the UK, I'm running One UI 6.0 Beta 1 on the UK European model of the Galaxy S23 Ultra with the last four digits of the build number showing ZWH8 which also updates the monthly security patch to August 2023, as of the time of this recording on the 11th of August. One UI 6.0 Beta 1 availability currently is only on the Galaxy S23 Ultra, S23 Plus, and S23, which will also depend on your region or country. Compared to the Galaxy S23, which is still running the July 2023 security patch with the build number ending AWF7, we also have the S22 Plus for reference, which just got the security patch for August 2023 with the build number ending in CWGA running on One UI 5.1, which is to say that your mileage may vary when it comes to general software updates and especially beta availability. Let's start with what's new with the quick panel. When you first swipe down, you notice that how the notifications are grouped and presented visually has changed with each notification appearing as separate cards with rounded corners, making it easier to recognize individual notifications. When you swipe down again, the biggest change comes with the new button layout for the quick panel, which clearly groups each section of icons and settings with a black background with rounded corners faded with a low opacity blur. The Wi-Fi and Bluetooth icons are at the top separated to the left and right, while features such as orientation, torch, mobile data, and more are grouped together below, followed by the calls, messages, and mobile data options for your SIM cards. Below that is the screen brightness slider grouped with the dark mode and the eye comfort shield toggle. And the last but not the least is the smart view and device control settings on the bottom left and right. If we go back to the top, you'll notice that compared to One UI 5.1, the system-wide search icon has now been removed and the hamburger button, which shows the options for edit buttons, quick panel layout, status bar, and contact us has also been removed. We still have the power and settings icon, but now there is an edit button in the shape of a pencil. When pressed, this now takes you to the new edit page, which gives you access to more controls than ever before. You can edit the top row of icons with six of your choice in the order you want. You can also edit the full quick panel icons in the order you want with the icons available. Below is a section for the quick settings instant access, which when enabled allows for a single swipe from the top right-handed corner straight to the quick settings panel. You've then got the option to change when you can see the brightness control slider to always show or show when quick panel expanded. The media control and media output buttons also have an option to don't show or show when quick panel is collapsed, which are also the same options for the multi-SIM card information. And last is the contact us section. If we go back to the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, 
What is nice here is the improvements to the interactions with them. If you press on the icons themselves, they will toggle on and off. If you press and hold the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth icons or names, it then takes you to the quick settings page rather than directly to the full settings page and the main settings menu of the phone, which I really like. When playing music or videos with album artwork, the artwork will fill up the entire media controller compared to before for a nicer visual look which also reflects on the lock screen. When customizing the lock screen, as well as being able to resize the clock widget like before, you now have the ability to move the clock widget to the position of your choice. This was borrowed directly from the Lockstar extension from Goodlock, and with our coverage of One UI 5 Beta last year, we did a comparison video highlighting this, and it's great to see Samsung natively implementing it here. The home screen app icon labels have now been changed a single line for a simpler look with Samsung and Galaxy names removed from some apps to make them shorter and easier to scan. For example, the Samsung Members app just says Members on One UI 6.0 Beta 1. The default system font for One UI 6.0 has changed for a more modern, slick and bold look. When using pop-up windows for multitasking, pop-up windows are now meant to resume as they were once you exit the Recents menu. Unless my execution of this is wrong, this does not look to be working right now and exhibits the same behavior as before on One UI 5.1. Emojis on the Samsung keyboard have now been given a fresh new look, which pops and looks clean across the board. Now for content sharing. When sharing a picture or video from any app, preview images will appear at the top of the share panel, giving you a chance to review the pictures and videos before sharing them. When you share content, additional options may appear on the share panel depending on the app you share from. For example, when you share from a website using a Google Chrome browser, you get the option to share a screenshot of the website along with the web address. There is now an additional new weather widget known as Weather Insights, which provides more information about your local weather conditions. You can see when severe thunderstorms, snow, rain, and other events are on the forecast and a different visual look for sunset and also sunrise. There is now more information in the weather app when it comes to things like snowfall, moon phases and times, atmospheric pressure, visibility distance, dew point, and wind direction are now available within the weather app. The interactive map view is set to allow movement around the map and the ability to tap a location to view the local weather conditions. But this looks no different to what was already there from One UI 5.1. So potentially we will see this in the next beta version. Illustrations in the weather widget and the app have been enhanced to provide better information about the current weather conditions. Background colors also change depending on the time of day. You can add custom camera widgets to your home screen. You can also set each widget to start in a specific shooting mode, save pictures, in an album of your choice and rename the camera widget shortcut. You can now choose whether your watermark appears at the top or bottom of your photos and the ability to select the date and time separately to be added. A resolution button is now available in the quick settings at the top of the screen in photo and pro mode so you can quickly change the resolution of the photos you take. A pop-up now appears when you tap the video size button, making it easier to see all the options and choose the right one. When grid lines are turned on in the camera settings, a level line will now appear in the middle of the screen while using the rear cameras in all modes except for panorama. The line will move to show whether your picture is level with the ground. Filter and face effects now use a dial instead of slider, making it easier to make precise adjustments with just one hand. You can choose between three levels of quality optimization for taking pictures. Choose maximum to get the highest quality pictures with the most processing. Choose minimum to reduce the amount of processing so you can take pictures as quickly as possible. You can also choose medium to get the best balance of speed and post-processing. This is also where you'll find the scene optimizer setting. The scan document feature has been separated from scene optimizer, so you can scan documents even if scene optimizer is turned off. The new auto scan lets you scan documents automatically whenever you take a picture of the document. After the document is scanned, 
you'll be taken to the edit screen where you can rotate your document to align in the way you want. The new Auto FPS can help you record brighter videos in low light conditions. Auto FPS now has three options. You can turn it off, use it for 30 FPS videos only, or use it for both 30 FPS and 60 FPS videos. When you clip something from an image, you can easily save it as a sticker that you can use later on when editing pictures or videos. While viewing a story, a thumbnail view appears when you swipe up from the bottom of the screen. In the thumbnail view, you can add or remove pictures and videos from your story. You now have the ability to drag and drop with two hands. Touch and hold pictures and videos with one hand and then use your other hand to navigate to the album where you want to drop them. When viewing a picture or video, swipe up from the bottom of the screen to go to the detailed view. This screen now provides quick access to effects and editing features you can immediately apply. You can now make changes to drawings, stickers, and text that you've added to a photo even after saving it. You can now easily undo and redo transformations, filters, and tones. The new tools menu makes it easier to find the editing features you need. Straighten and perspective options have been combined in the transform menu. When adding text or photo, you can choose from several new backgrounds and styles to help you get the perfect look. The new schedule view provides your upcoming events, tasks, and reminders all together in chronological order. You can now view and add reminders in the calendar app without opening the reminder app. The refined reminder list view. The main list view has now been redesigned. You can now manage categories at the top of the screen. Below the categories, your reminders will be shown organized by date. The layout for the reminders containing images and web links has also been enhanced. The place category contains reminders that alert you when you are in a specific place. And the no alert category contains reminders that don't provide any alerts. You can now create reminders for an entire day and customize the time when you want to be alerted about them. With the Samsung internet browser, you can keep playing video sound even if you leave the current tab or leave the internet app completely. When using the internet on a large screen, such as on a tablet, in landscape view or Samsung DeX, your tab list view will be shown in two columns so you can see more tabs on the screen at the same time. When you pin an image to the screen, you can now resize it or extract text from it. When selecting an area of the screen, a magnified view will appear so you can start and end your selection at the perfect spot. You can now edit the greeting that Bixby says when you answer using Bixby text call. You can switch to Bixby text call at any time even if the call is already in progress. You can now set up a different lock screen with their own wallpaper clock style for when you are driving, working, exercising, and more. When you start editing the lock screen while a mode is on, you will edit the lock screen for that mode. You can now start a routine when an app is playing media. Your routines can now do more than ever before. Change your lock screen change the Samsung keyboard settings and more. The smart suggestions widget has now been redesigned with a layout that better aligns with other icons on your home screen. You can now adjust transparency and choose between a white or black background. You can also set apps to exclude from suggestions. When an app appears in your search results, you can touch and hold the app to get quick access to the actions you can perform using the app. For example, if you search for the calendar app, the buttons for adding an event or searching your calendar will appear. App actions will also appear in search results on their own if you search for the name of the action instead of the app. Recommendation cards will appear to help you free up storage space. My files will recommend deleting unnecessary files, give you tips for setting up cloud storage, and also let you know which apps on your phone are using the most storage space. If you turn on Wi-Fi and Bluetooth while airplane mode is on, your phone will remember. The next time you use airplane mode, 
Wi-Fi or Bluetooth will remain on instead of turning off. Battery settings now have their own top level settings menu so you can easily check your battery usage and manage your battery settings. Get an extra level of protection for your apps and data. Auto blocker prevents unknown apps from being installed, checks for malware and blocks malicious commands from being sent to your phone using a USB cable. Customize how your magnification window appears. You can choose full screen, partial screen or allow switching between the two. You can now increase the thickness of the cursor that appears while editing text so that it's easier to see. With our initial usage of One UI 6.0 Beta 1 on the Galaxy S23 Ultra, we do have a few feedback about how the experience has been, what could be improved and also what's great so far. First of all, there is a bug with the Android 14 Easter egg not allowing you to go back with gestures and also on-screen buttons. The app icons label being a single line are not always clean. For example, the JBL headphones app with the single line doesn't look as clean as on One UI 5.1. The pop-up windows multitasking from recent menu is not working. Also, the interactive map view in the weather app looks no different to One UI 5.1. There should also be a toggle method for the resolution button without covering the other settings such as timer, flash, and more. There should also be a long press and hold option to show all the options for the quick camera settings. The lab section has also been streamlined with a single toggle for multi-window for all apps. What's great is at the current time of using One UI 6.0 Beta 1, the speed and fluidity is excellent. And it may not seem that much, but it looks like it's another area of improvement which builds on what was achieved with One UI 5.1. Overall, One UI 6.0 with Beta 1 is looking like a good step in the right direction for Samsung's version of Android 14. Do you have One UI 6.0 Beta 1? What's your experience so far? Let us know in the comment section below. For the latest news and the world of Samsung Daily, be sure to visit us at sammobile.com. And for the latest videos on YouTube with Sam Mobile TV, be sure to subscribe and turn the notifications and we will see you next time.